I posted a look on Instagram and TikTok, which by the way, if you're not following me on either of those, um, I'm actually a bit offended by you. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a solid reason that I could give you as to why you should go do that. It's very, like it just takes two seconds. Posted this pink look on there. You just wanted to see it and outburfed this video. Let me tell you, okay, it has been a long fucking time since I've put color on my face, let alone put color on my face and loved it to the point where I'm going out Saturday, I'm wearing this. It's my friend's birthday and it's a bombless brunch. Shout out to you, Chantel. <laughs> the inspiration for the look I took from someone called Shavonte Dill, I believe is her name. She's so beautiful. This is the look that she did. So I took inspiration and kind of made it into my own. I think they call this a reverse cut crease. So essentially you've got the pink on the lid into the brown and then above the cut crease line, you've got brown into pink. Along with that, we've got super blushed skin, super glowy skin, a nice pinky glossy lip. And yeah, I'm excited to show you this. I think that you guys are gonna rock this. In fact, I know you will. If you recreate, show me the pictures because I wanna see okay. I also used a bunch of really cool, really not as used makeup products on my channel. So it's just, you're not gonna see like the same shit all the time. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you. I used slightly different makeup products as well to what I did the first time around, but essentially it's the same type of thing. I'm shutting up, so enjoy, okay? Oh baby, we are up close and personal. You can see what I have for breakfast. <laughs> Take a little sip of tea before we get started. Yes, how stinking cute is this mug? I die. Yes, I know it's not Christmas, but listen, she's fucking cool. Doing things how we normally do over here with a makeup look like this, we are gonna do eyes first, just to give us room to fuck up, basically. It shouldn't, I have faith because I have done this before, but if anything does go wrong, we can easily wipe it away without ruining any base makeup. Priming the eyes, I am actually just gonna use some concealer today. Nothing crazy, super simple. You can use an actual eye base if you want to. This, to be honest, does a similar type of thing. I do like my P. Louise base though, but this is just what we're gonna wear with today. Pat that in. Have already done my brows, so I have already kind of concealed and carved them out. So I'm gonna take this um, concealer that I'm using all over the eye right up to that brow bone just to make sure it's completely seamless. Then once it's done, you'll see we have nice even eyelids to work with. The discoloration's gone. We've also got a bit of tack, so our eyeshadows will perform even better. I don't set mine. Personally, I think that the eyeshadows perform better because they have something to stick to. It's like your foundation, right? When you put a primer down, giving it something to grip and stick to allows it to kind of last longer. Same type of concept with your eyeshadow. Time to pick the weapon of choice. Mine today is gonna be this. I'm sure we already know this, but Be Perfect have my favorite eyeshadows ever. I'm not just talking like the color stories, the color palette, the aesthetic, I'm talking the formula as well. They have it down to a T, right? And this one is perfect because we've got those pinks that we want for this look, but we've also got the browns and the neutrals. Everything we need for this eyeshadow look is gonna be in this palette, okay? This one is the Be Perfect Cosmetics Carnival XL Pro Palette. This one in particular is in collaboration with Stacey Marie. These ones are so fab, guys. Grab your brush. The first one we're gonna be working with is a angled brush. Something small, precise, something that we're gonna be able Able to map out a shape with. Guys, for this look, we kind of mix shades. Rubbing intuition, this dark brown, and then also fade, which is a bit more of a cooler toned brown. Starting right in this inner corner, I'm gonna start to drag this line around. Now, obviously this does not have to be perfect by any means. What I do wanna do though, is bring it right onto the nose because the eye look, you guys have probably seen, but it starts right in here. Actually a really cool makeup tip if you like your nose contour to look more snatched. To bring in your eyeshadow right down here, we'll do exactly that. So right in here and then map it round and then we're gonna wanna bring it down here and then at the end, flick her up. Going a little more just to intensify that. Here's the thing guys, everybody's eye shape is different. So for me, this is kind of what works. This is what I have space for, do you know what I mean? So kind of work with what you've got, bearing in mind that you want the color to fit in here. Obviously I've gone way above my crease. You wanna leave enough room though for up top because obviously we're gonna wanna blend this brown up and then we wanna leave room for pink up top here too. So it's kind of just, just feeling what will work with your eye shape, the room that you've got, etc., etc., etc. Middle part here, I actually like this to be more straight than rounded, so I'm kind of not creating like a super shape. I'm also in straight and then flick. Does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> Heads up, when I did this the other day, I did both eyes at the same time. That way I could get them as even as possible. So I did like one step here, followed it onto here, then keep going, you feel me? But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna do one eye first. Break it down, get into details, but I mean, you do what works for you. That's just like a little tip, but that way it's just less work. Less chance of them looking like fucking distant relatives. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> On a small compact pencil brush, I've taken the same colors and we are gonna use this to start blending out this line, but just above the line. We're not gonna take it below at this point. So first half of the line here, blend upwards. Mm -hmm. 
clean brush let's take the color shuffle which is this like almost yellowy mustard tone tap it off just a little bit of that and I'm going to use this to blend this up to the brow bone this color is nice because it's not too harsh it's not too much especially when you start to put your base products on as well everything sort of melts in with it it also helps make it a little bit more neutral because I don't want anything too warm I don't want anything too cool I just want that nice neutral brown situation which is why we mix colors as well because it helps with that now let's take the brown underneath on the outer half of the eyes above the line it goes brown to pink underneath the line it goes pink to brown keep that in mind and I promise it will help it will make it make way more sense when I first did it I was like eh? I was getting so confused I was like shit am I putting this in the right place this needs to go I'm just gonna pat the color in first right on this outer corner area here again don't go above the line keep it below this time buff and blend I can't use tap emotions I find it to be a little bit easier buff it in until you start to get that nice seamless blend these Be Perfect eyeshadows are so pigmented that I find I don't even really need to like dip it in a million times. I mean, you saw that one little dip has basically kind of done it for me. The outer corner, guys, don't go too crazy in terms of blending. You want to keep this shape here, right? So I'm going to blend it obviously up to the line. I'm keeping this sort of wing shape. Do you see that? Dipping into shuffle that mustard shade, tapping that right on the edge of that brown, just so it will blend nicer into the pink when we lay it down. Keep blending, keep blending. Um, I go right up to the line. Don't blend out the line too much though. I will go back in in a second and just sharpen this up, but try and keep that shape as you're blending. Use smaller brushes if you need to, to kind of keep the control. Do what feels right. Guys, I'm not an expert. I've literally done this look once and it turned out all right. So I'm just sharing with you what I did and what I find to be easier, okay? I'm not a pro by any means. I'm just a girl who's done this look before and I'm sharing it with the internet. Okay, cool. Before we move any further, I think it's time to add the pink. Let's get all the colors on and then we can tweak any little bits if we need to. Grab your small flat brush, baby, because we are going to need it, okay? We are going to be mixing together this shade here, Pep Talk, which is this bright pink, but we're going to mix in Pillow Talk, which is the white in the, in the right-hand corner here. That way we're going to get more of a baby pink. And then we're just coloring in. Pretty much this blank space, fill it in. In a corner, don't forget to bring it through to the nose here. This look almost is like cut creasy without the cut crease. Do you know what I mean? I think that's why I like this look, right? Because it's actually a little bit easier to do. Don't need this super steady hand or kind of creating really, really fine, intricate lines. I don't know. It's like an easy way to do a cut crease effect without the cut crease. Do you know what I mean? Back in with one of the brushes we use for the browns just to marry the two colors together. Honestly, this pink shade has me feeling some type of way. I die. Don't forget guys what we're doing underneath the line we're doing on top. So let's take the pink and fill in the above space here and obviously connect it into the brown that we have on top. Don't forget to bring it round all the way up here too. I actually think when I was doing this last time when I did this say you didn't want to do like the pink on top you could go for like a like a pink highlighter instead and kind of use it to like highlight the brow bone more if you want a more sort of like timid version of this. To be honest though once it's all blended out and stuff oh I just love this look like it's it, this is wearable to me. Don't worry as well if you kind of blend it into the like brown line underneath slightly we will define it in a sec. Teeny bit more brown let's do that let's define this and then blend that out obviously just so it doesn't look like a line <laughs> so guys can we see the shape and pattern that we're after now brown pink pink brown they're almost like twisted together though do you know what i mean and it does look crazy right now like when i first did this makeup look i was like oh do i like this you guys know what i'm talking about when i say you need a lash in the skin to complete this look looks ugly before it looks great looks bad before it gets better Okay, trust the process. <laughs> Allow me to go fix up the other eye, get them looking as even as I can, and then we will continue to finish everything off. Back with both eyes complete. I think they're about as even as I'm gonna get them. The thing is though, this eye and my eyebrow actually, I have more expression. So like this half of my face always sits so much higher than this one. So then my eyeshadow always looks slightly like, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. It's not a big deal, but like, we're working with what we've got over here, guys. Okay, by the way, a little tip that I did when I was doing the makeup, and I always forget to like say this, and it sounds like so simple and just like, well, yeah, duh, duh, brain. <laughs> when you are trying to get your eyes even, especially on more kind of looks like this, or even so if you're doing like a wing liner or anything, right, tilt your head in all different directions, especially down. When I tilt my head down like this, I can really focus on like not the lid, but the tops of my eyes, so I can focus on getting this bit even, tilt your head back, and then you can focus on the crease. I then do like side to side as well. All directions cover all areas. That way you can see your makeup from all different angles. Really does help. That's my little tip. Tilt your head, bitches, okay? <laughs> Next step. 
I need to put a brush down. I keep looking. Okay, right. Mm. Let's get some lashes on. So the first thing we're going to do is apply some mascara. This is the new Maybelline, the Colossal Curl Bounce Mascara. Guys, this is really, really lovely. It has a nice curved wand. It's not a plastic wand. It's one of those like fluffy ones. I really feel like it helps to grip all the lashes. Um, and it's quite nice and black as well. Not that I care too much because you guys know when I apply lashes, I don't really care. However, we are actually going to be applying half lashes, not full lashes. So I will kind of concentrate on them a little bit more because the front ones especially will show. Honestly though, Maybelline straight up have some of my favourite mascaras ever. You cannot be a good old drugstore mascara. And I say that with chest, I mean that. Don't go out and spend a shit ton on a mascara. You don't need to. <sighs> Poo! I got it on my eye, it's fine. I'll wipe off in a sec. But look at those lashes. If I really spent time on them, I could make these look so good. These were the lashes that I used and I'm kind of obsessed now. Guys, all I did was took a full lash. These are the designer lashes in the style Lula cut off like the first sort of like four sections of lashes so i end up with these little ends reason why i love these ones is because they're so fluffy so they look really like fluttery and kind of cat eye on the outer corner which for this look i feel like is perfect i feel like it complements it really perfectly so grab yourself some of these listen though if there is a pair of lashes that you don't like do not throw them away. Seriously, the amount of times, yeah, that I threw away some lashes because I felt like they didn't suit me or I just didn't like them. Whatever the case may be, I just got rid. I just regret all my life choices, to be honest. So don't make the same mistake I did, okay? Learn from me. Let's <laughs> wait for these to go tacky. Now, if you watch my 2021 favourites, you know I've been loving half lashes anyway. Designer lashes do do half lashes if you don't want to cut a pair if you're too scared or whatever, but just the right eye. Yeah, okay, good. I <laughs> have to check then. Super, super easy to pop on as well. And then I sort of push up. That way the lash stands is, stands is? Stands. <laughs> what? Stands up a little bit more. You're going to get that sort of more flick. Pushing on your lashes, you can create a different style. So if I was to push down, you see they're lower. And then if I was to push up, they lift. A lash can look totally different, even just by the way it sits on your eyes. So be sure to kind of push them to sit how you want them to. Look at the sun in the back, just like trying to peep through. <laughs> There's little like squares on the wall. Like, why is that? Ignore that. I know it's like a little bit crazy. But final little things we want to do. I'm going to take my Fenty brown liquid liner. It's in Big Truffle. Actually, scrap that. I used black because we used black in the waterline. So I'm going to take my Benefit roller liner right into this inner corner here. Same thing on the other side. I do like to bring it out a tiny, tiny bit as well. Not too much because that style of makeup doesn't really suit me, but just a little bit. And then you want to take a black curl pencil. My one I'm using is the NYX Epic Wear. Right into that waterline. I love this curl pencil. Definitely one of my favorite drugstore curl liners. It lasts really well on the eye. Like it doesn't fade in like four seconds, you know what I mean? And that's literally all that I do for the eyes. Naturally, any of the edges here get cleaned up with concealer anyway. But for the most part, guys, that's it. Now all we've got to do is level this up with skin. Starting, of course, with priming the skin. I'm using two because I want them for like two different things, especially if I'm going out. Like like I said, Saturday, I really want to wear this makeup when I'm going out. This is the type of routine that I like to do because then I'm focusing on different areas and I feel like, I don't know, I get the desired complete, like we're going for a makeup look that I want. <laughs> First product, this is going to be what adds the glow. This is the L'Oreal Glow Cherie. Am I saying that right? I'm sure French people in the comments are about to roast me. This one is in the medium glow. They do have a lighter one as well, but essentially this is just going to give me a bit of glow. So I'm going to focus this on the outer parts, not in the middle because we're going to use something else there. Oh my God, this stuff smells so good. It smells like watermelon. 24 hour hydration as well. So this is going to add that just moistness. I know we all love that word to the skin. <laughs> Blending that in with a brush. You can use your fingers if you want, but so lovely. It's not too much. Like, it's not too crazy. It doesn't make my skin look wet. And it also doesn't feel too kind of, like, greasy or wet. It doesn't do anything crazy, like, make my foundation slip or anything on top of it. My skin kind of just absorbs it and it just creates that nice glow veil onto the skin. Then we're going to hit it with primer number two. This is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pore Banishing and Blurring Face Primer. So, of course, this is going to go in the T-zone. Anywhere that you have those pores, this is where this is going to go. I like this one, you know, because it's actually a really interesting consistency. It's like, almost like a hybrid type of, um primer it's not like just silicone based it's almost got that moisture to it at the same time but can you see the difference from this side to this side i mean i don't know if the camera's picking it up but it's instantly kind of like mattified that area if i zoom you in see how much smoother this side of my face looks compared to this side even the under eye area all thanks to this this is one of my favorite pore blurring items because i don't like anything too silicone based or anything too heavy this isn't that and obviously you can see like an instant difference in your skin especially if for example like on a makeup look like this i like to add the glow in at the end with obviously all the highlight products right 
and by doing that sometimes just naturally when you blend products into your skin they can go a little bit further than you'd want them to so the highlighter might end up a little bit in the middle of the skin or I don't know highlight obviously can emphasize certain areas right so this will stop it falling into the pores and kind of emphasizing them right it will just create that barrier so then when you put products on top it will sit on top rather than go in right okay you've seen enough back up <laughs> this is one of those products yet that I actually don't know why I don't use as often you know when something's hidden away and then you can't quite remember exactly what you think about it and then you use it again you're like that's what. Luckily for me at the moment, my skin's actually been pretty decent, so I don't need too much. However, I am still gonna go in with my NARS Complete Coverage Concealer, the little pot one. Soft Matte Complete Coverage Concealer. This is in medium custard, just to conceal any little scarring that I have. If you don't do this in your makeup routine, I promise it will literally change your life. You use way less product when it comes to foundation, therefore your overall makeup will look better. The concealer is made to conceal, so let this do the work, not your other makeup products, trust me. Anywhere that I need it. Uh, maybe a little bit here, a little bit here. Then what I like to do is let this sit for a second. Just while I'm gonna start to prep my foundation and stuff, I'll let this chill. My foundation of choice today, I am gonna switch things up. It's gonna be the Fenty Pro Filter Foundation. This is the matte one. 255 is the shade that I'm gonna be using today. Using a sponge to blend it out, but I am actually gonna spray some of my setting spray. This is the Milani Make It Last Original. Give it a shake up, and then you wanna spray your sponge everywhere with it. Put a generous amount on, squeeze that in, and then obviously when we blend the foundation out with this, we're gonna infuse a setting spray in so it's gonna last even more such a beautiful foundation if you love coverage and obviously something that is more like the satin matte side in terms of the way that it sits on the skin and the finish you will bloody love this I'm sure we all know about it. it's right it's Fenty shade range of this foundation as well are you fucking joking yeah, she did that. It's a pretty full on foundation though, which obviously at times like this, when I've got like more crazy eye looks on, I love. I mean, who am I fucking kidding? This is me we're talking about, okay? Give me all the coverage every single day. Full on, full canvas type of foundation, but it's bloody beautiful. Do you know what? I think with this foundation, I do prefer a sponge the best. I feel like it really melts the product into the skin. Totally up to you though. You do what you're comfortable with. And you see as well where we've concealed underneath already. This is one layer. That's all I've gone in with and we don't even need more. Concealer, we are using none other than the HMB Soft Focus Airbrush Concealer. But we're actually gonna be using two shades today. Exciting news about this concealer, guys. I do actually have a discount code for 10% off. If you use Jordan L10 at checkout, you'll save 10%. Transparency, I do earn a little bit of commission from it, but it's there if you wanna save a little bit of money. Every penny counts. Situation is a win for you guys, a win for me. Um, but honestly, this concealer is so amazing. I rave about it in my 2021 favorites. In fact, at the moment, I think I'm raving about it in every single makeup video because it's that good. This shade, by the way, is 2W, which is the shade I use pretty much all the time. I am going to be grabbing a brush to blend it out with as well. So just start to tap this into the skin. Shade-wise, I've obviously gone just a couple shades lighter to kind of highlight and brighten and conceal at all at the same time. It just saves a job. We'll be going in in a minute with a really light shade. You'll see why, because that's kind of the style of the look. But underneath the eyes, especially when we get to this bit, I'm going to sort of drag this back to kind of clean up that edge. Tap over it with my finger, though. I don't want it to be like a clean line, but I just want it to sort of be a little bit more tidy you know, and then obviously be careful with the pink in the inner corner. We can touch up, but I'll do that at the end for sure. But also bring the concealer onto the sides of your nose because that's going to help snatch everything. Same concealer. This is in shade zero though. So this is like the white almost. Tap some onto the sides of the nose here. Same again on this side, but keep it just in this area here. We're not going to bring up the sides or anything like that. We're going to keep it right here. Take the same brush because obviously this has got the concealer color already on the bristles. Really focus that blending in one area. Don't go crazy and start blending it out all over the place. Just really pounce it in, in this one particular area. It will start to blend. Use the sponge to just sort of blend out the edges. But I wanted for this makeup look to have a really, really bright under eye. Some people love this, some people hate this. I think it depends on whatever you're into, right? For this particular makeup look with the pink and stuff, I love the really bright under eye. This is just what I did. You do whatever feels comfortable for you. Cream contour, you already know. Straight onto the places that I normally go. Maybe a little bit higher on the cheekbones. That way we can really focus and get that really lifted uh, face. So just above. And then just anywhere else that you guys personally like to contour. Using a brush, I'm just going to start to tap that into the skin. Just going to add shape and colour. 
back to the complexion. By the way, I know the under eyes might look a little bit crazy right now, just trust me. <laughs> I swear this always happens, but I feel like in real life it doesn't look as crazy as it does what I feel like on camera right now, but maybe, maybe I'm seeing things. Keep blending, blend into your arms full of. If you think it's blended, it's not. Carry on. Key to the complexion is blend, blend, blend. Especially if you're like me and you're kind of layering your makeup products, it's the best way to be. If you contour your nose, remember that you've got the eyeshadow. So can you see, I'm blending mine right into the line of the eyeshadow, really softly and with a light hand and then continue it on. That way you get that blend. And I feel like the eyeshadow really helps to kind of snatch the nose in even more so. My other favorite part, blush. Cream blush to start. This is the Refai cream blush in the color Rose. It's a beautiful baby pink. This color, I'm telling you, is one of the best cream blush colors ever to exist. Let me just pat this onto the skin. I'm obsessed with this shade, honestly. It's such a beautiful shade of pink and it's such a universal pink shade as well. You know, one of those pink shades that just go with everything. That is this. Keeping this blush shade though nice and high on the cheekbones. I'm not taking it sort of into this area here onto the apples because obviously I don't want to overlay onto the white because I want to keep it nice and bright. A little bit more. Honestly, I layer this shit up so much. No wonder why I'm here in pattern because I use about 1200 layers. <laughs> Time to set everything in place. Now you guys might call me a little bit crazy for this because I am actually going to go in for underneath my eye with the same white shadow that we used earlier. I know, I know. Just to keep the brightness, because if we go in with, say, a translucent powder or something that's colored, you're gonna dull it down. For this look, I didn't do that right. So all I'm gonna do, well, first make sure that any creases are tapped out. Damp sponge, same sort of process like I normally would. Pick some up and press right on top of this white. I am gonna dip in with a little bit of my RCMA No Color Powder as well, which looks like this. I've just tipped a little bit out just to get that thicker layer of powder as well. We kind of blend the two together. The reason I'm using the RCMA is because I know that it genuinely has no color to it, so. See how bright that is, how we've kept that. And then I do go in and do my normal powder routine now. So I'm gonna take my Huda Beauty Loose Powder. What's it actually called? The Easy Bake Loose Bacon and Sand Powder. This is in pound cake. In with your damp sponge and then press this into the skin. Guys, to get that seamless blend between like the white under eye and then my skin as well, I'll take the Huda Beauty powder on the sponge and just slowly work it up into it. I won't go like on it, but just into the edges of it, super, super lightly. And then everything sort of blends together. Big fluffy brush now and my Fenty Beauty powder in 235. This is the foundation powder, I swear by this. This is my favorite way to set my face, this whole sort of like routine here. <laughs> this powder is what I use to basically set the outer parts of my face, but also to dust off any of the like existing powder that's on there. A Little bit of color, a little bit of coverage. What more could we want? On top of that, baby, we are set. You're set with all of this going on, trust me, your makeup won't move. <laughs> Let's layer the powder products now. So I'm using the Jordana Tishia Cosmetics Bronzer Duo. So there's a cream on the bottom and a powder on the top. I'm gonna be using the powder. This is in Fiji Fling. This is actually very similar, like color-wise to say like MAC Give Me Sun. You know that warm bronzer shade, that's what this is, which is my favorite. So let's go in. Hitting all them same spots that I put the cream essentially guys, super easy. Once we powder and everything, obviously, as you can tell, all the colors start to die down. They're there still, you know, you can see the cream bronzer peeking through and the blush and stuff. They're just not as intense as I personally like them to be. Also by layering up, I feel like we're adding another layer. Therefore the lasting power is great. Kind of stops the fading. Do you know what I mean? Like it's that type of, type of vibe. Blush, I really feel like there's only one shade that's like fitting for this and it's my NARS Thrill. Cause I mean, yeah. Even though technically it doesn't show up like this on the skin, like that's not how it translates exactly, but it just, you'll see, you'll see. Really load that baby on, okay, do not be shy. Tap it right onto that cheekbone and then I decrease the pressure and then blend out the edges. Kind of my favorite technique for my blush, especially for like this type of look. So load it on, pat that product on. Patting I feel like really applies the product and you get the pigment and stuff. Do not forget the tip of the nose and a little bit down the center as well, but mainly on the, the tip of the nose. Oh, and then what I also did, I've just remembered is I actually took some of the color that I used on my eye just to marry everything together. So that's pep talk there. Tiny bit, cause this is big, but it's right here. 
just layer it up. Starting off with the Refi liquid highlighter. I actually ended up layering two different products. So we've got a cream and a powder. You will see why. Squeezing some onto the back of my hand. Grab your sponge. I just use my sponge for everything, I swear. But you're just gonna squeeze it to give you a smaller surface area. Load that up, okay? Tap right into that Refi liquid highlighter. Really kind of melt it into the sponge and distribute it. Then press it onto the cheek area. And this product does not break up any of the products we have on underneath, any of the powder products. It doesn't separate or anything like that. I'm gonna hit on the forehead as well. You see that? Oh, it's just divine. The star of the show, the next one, the Fenty Water Brat Highlighter. I mean, what could be more perfect than this? I actually added this on last minute to the look. I was like, let's add some glitter. Let's add some glitter and some like extraness. That is what this brings. This is not for the faint hearted, okay? This is a more glittery type of highlighter, right? I mean, it's pink based, of course. I even like loaded this onto my chest as well to give it that like pink glittery look to it, which is the vine. Placement of this, I kind of put slightly lower. So I kind of want to, so like, say like your makeup's a sandwich, right? So you've got your bronzer, your blush, and then your highlight. In between the layer of the highlight and the blush, that's where I put this product. If you put it too high, it will look a little bit strange because it is like pigmented in terms of like the color base behind it is pink. You'll get that shadow, you don't want that. You want to put it lower so it kind of is in with the blush, but still high enough that it's all highlights. Because if you put it down here, it's just not going to look a little bit weird. Yeah. See that little bit of like a pink glow as well. So obviously from the side highlighter hits the light and it's great. And then you will uh, from certain angles get the shadow. So just make sure that it's blended. Kind of using this as like a topper, to be honest. Um, I am using a smaller brush though, just so it's a little bit more precise, but I'm just like one big glitter ball now. I love it. Any final little touches is what we're about to do now. So for me, that's obviously just finishing my nose contour, anything underneath the eye, and then adding my little like mole type beauty marks that I like to do. Starting with nose contour, I'm gonna take my NYX Jumbo Milk eye crayon straight down the center of my nose and a little bit on the tip use my finger to blend that in this is essentially going to do the um nose contour for me guys i mean we've already got a little bit there but can you see that just brings it to life this product is such an easy way for you to do your contour for your nose honestly if you struggle with it try this method it's almost like reverse doing it emphasizing the highlight rather than the shadows and yeah it just works a treat i am going to go over my cream contour on my nose though just to bring it out even more you don't have to do this but I just kind of tidy it up and then I also put a little line just here as well. Excess blush on the brush. Okay, cool. For the eyes, it's just a couple things left. I don't really do anything underneath the eye. The only thing I do do is grab the color fade, which is that cool toned brown here and take a tiny little bit right underneath the eye. Just a small amount, keep it really close to the lash line. Guys, I pretty much do this to literally just blend out ever so slightly that black line underneath the eye, just so it doesn't look so harsh. Back into the white and pink little combo, and I'm just gonna bring down this area here a tiny bit more. I feel like obviously we rubbed it away a little bit where we've done concealer and stuff. My misguided brow marker in dark brown, just to do the little faux um, beauty marks. So for this look, I put one here. I'm pretty sure I did one above my eyebrow here too. And a little one here. But that's all I did for this one. Lips now, guys. That is the final step. So I'm going to be taking my Morphe Sweet Tea Lip Liner. Mine needs a little sharpen. Bear with. Overline like I normally would. So I actually show you how I overline. I don't normally do that, so maybe I should. My bottom lip, to be fair, I kind of keep quite similar to be fair it's more my top but overline under here and then the edges bring back in to meet your lip line if that makes sense another thing i like to do though this makes my lips look plumper so i don't almost follow it from corner to corner what i will do bring it in closer so my lips look shorter so the plumpness is here it's shorter on the sides i feel like it just makes my lips look plumper so top lip okay i'm not gonna follow my lip line i am gonna go above like this. I also get rid of my cupid's bow because I feel like that makes my lips look plumper. Overline ever so slightly at the sides here. I'm gonna stop about there. Then instead of following this all the way to the inner corner here, I almost cut it off. You see that? Instead of following it straight and kind of finishing here, I finish inner. My lips don't go out. They almost go like in. That's how I personally like to overline. And then I'm just going to fill in the edges ever so slightly. What I am going to do is I'm actually going to go in with this lip liner here. This is actually by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I just got these in PR, but this color looks perfect to almost blend this lip color in with the actual lipstick because the lipstick is quite light. Maybe this will work as like a gradient. It seems like the perfect color. This is in hazelnut. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, look how much better that looks. I feel like when I put the lipstick on now, it won't look like lip liner lipstick. I was analyzing some of my makeup looks the other day and I felt like it was looking a little, a little too mm, for my liking. Mm, that color is really lovely. Like I said, I do want a nice like gradient light lip color in the middle for this eye look because I feel like then it lets this do all the talking. So we're gonna be taking Morphe first base right in the center there. Oh yeah, that ABH lip liner definitely helped to blend that in even more. The matte lip with this eye look, I love. I think it is beautiful. However, I did actually add a gloss in the makeup look. And the reason why I did this is because it adds a bit of pink to the lip. This is quite like beige and neutral, which we all know I love, but <laughs> let's do what I did. So this is the Peaches and Cream Lip Gloss in the shade Bambi. I took a tiny bit on my finger, put it right over the top. Setting spray to finish off, back in with the Milani Make It Last Original. And this, everybody, is the finished pink makeup look. And we are done. What do you guys think? Let me know. Such a wearable way to do color. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, I as soon as I did this, I was like, I have to wear this when I next go out because it's just one of those looks. But not scary. It's not hard to do either. I don't think you have to have particularly like expert or advanced makeup skills to do this at all. You really, really don't. All the products will be linked below. So check that out. I love all the products that I use. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. I love you. And I'll see you all soon, okay?